Well, hello everybody. Hi. Hey, it's Becky from Power Tools with Thread. And today we are going to finish up putting together our February Kimberbell mini quilt. So I'm really excited to get this done. We did the first uh, iteration of this on last Thursday for the single needle. And then, <clears throat> pardon me, and then we're going to, we, on Friday, we did the multi-needle and, oh, you know what? Thank you so much. Made by Margie. I did that. I'm actually talking to my phone right now, so I'm good with that. And then I've already hit record on the other camera when we go over to the sewing machine. <laughs> so it is so good to see all of y'all here. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay. So, uh, what we're doing, this is January's. Okay. And this was a nine patch. So it was a pretty, like a standard nine patch uh, put together in that if it was a quilt, right? That's what it would be. Well, this time we had a little four patch to make one, and then it's going to be putting together like a regular four patch. So uh, you had homework over the weekend, and that was to be able to get all of your little blocks stitched out. And so... Now I'm going to show you how to trim up a block using a, a, a ruler called, well, hi, DD. This is a ruler. Uh, it's called Trimmer by George. Okay. Now, if you have Trimmer by George 1.0 or 2.0, it's going to work just the same. The Trimmer by George is proprietary to Hoop Sisters, and it has a metal lip edge on this. And if you get to where you're making a whole bunch of blocks and quilts and things like that, that are of this nature where you're making them in the hoop and you've got to, it does a placement line and then you're going to put your batting down and then you'll tack down the fabric. And uh, am I frozen? Is that you told me, but you can hear me. It said I might want to go into my settings and change it down from 1080p down to seven something, but I don't think I can do that right now. I don't know how to do that, but um, you ordered the trimmer by George. Good. Yeah. So when you normally do that with an embroidery machine, after you, the batting is tacked down, it's glitchy. Oh y'all, I'm so sorry. Frozen. Let me see if I can fix in the settings, let's see, stream info. No, that doesn't work. Nope, I can't do that. I don't know. Now I've gotten myself to a place I don't think I can get out of, you guys. Hold on here. Okay, I'm back. No, I went down the black hole. <laughs> Y'all, I'm trying to uh, stream at a lower resolution and then maybe it won't be glitchy. I'm here, I'm here, I can see you guys, yeah. So after the batting gets tacked down, usually those instructions want you to pull the hoop and then trim around the line so that you remove all the excess batting that you don't need. Well, in now, when you have a trimmer by George, you can skip that step in the hoop. And that's very handy when you've got a whole lot of blocks to do. You're gonna save an enormous amount of time. So I'm gonna show you how to use the trimmer by George, and then we're gonna trim up this last block, which is the gentleman bird block, this guy right here. We're gonna trim him up, okay? All right, so how you normally will do this is, let me turn the phone down a little bit. Katie, I'm sorry the video is jerky. I can't even get my tablet to load. 
and it's because my internet is overwhelmed and we're having that freeze here in Texas right now. And I'm wondering if that's the problem that and everybody and their brother is on the internet right now because everybody's home from school because of the freeze. Right. And plus it's a federal holiday. So I'm just going to pull this down. Now you, all you would need to do is to fold back the top layer of the fabric, just like this. And you take the trimmer by George and you take the metal edge of it and you f hold it right up like this and fold it over. And that protects the, um, let's see, okay. It is the weather. I'm sorry, you guys. I'm sure it's the weather. So this protects the fabric. Now you need to use a 60 millimeter rotary cutter with this if you're using this kind of rotary cutter. The reason being, this has not, it's got some, your rotary cutter won't fit because of the button and you're not gonna, this button right here makes contact with that and you don't get a clean cut. So you wanna use the 60 millimeter rotary cutter and then you just trim away the stabilizer and the batting at the same time, okay? Then you can fold this back and you can cut I'm going to put my dotted line, my half inch line right there, and then I'm going to cut a half inch seam allowance. I prefer a half inch in this kind. Oh, thank you so much for the, <laughs> the super sticker. You're, you're a sweetheart. Okay. Now, I'm going to do the same thing here, and this just makes it super quick to go through and trim up all of your blocks really quick. And once you get the hang of this, you're going to love it. If you're ever making something that's got a load of blocks, you'll also want to get like a rotary cutter. Okay. I've got links to the designs, the trimmer by George and all that below in the description box. So I'm going to, oh, I've got a, I stitched that thing. I shouldn't have stitched. Hold on a second. Okay. I stitched that line I shouldn't have stitched. I'm going to get rid of it with my key stripper. There we go. That was the do not stitch. Put this up. When I go over to the other camera, maybe the jerkiness or the freezing will go away because it is connected directly into the internet. Right now I might be on Wi-Fi. That wouldn't be good. That, that may be the problem there. Okay. So I'm just going to leave this extra one because now we're going to trim up this block. So the best way to trim up Kimberbell blocks is to use what are called orange pop rulers. And these are great because, thank you, DD, you're a sweetheart, because what it does, it allows you to in the hoop just like this and I can see that last stitched edge I've got that there so I'm measuring to make sure I've got equal distance top and bottom but the nice thing about the orange pop rulers is that there is little cuts in them that allow the rotary cutter to go up into the edge and they've got a couple of different sets of these and if you're just starting out I would recommend getting this square set because you are, and this is the six and a half square. So we're squaring this block to six and a half. So you are going to use the square rulers more often than the rectangular rulers. If you ever are going to do a Kimberbell quilt, like Red, White, and Bloom, or um, any of their Halloween quilts, those blocks are all different sizes. And I would recommend getting both sets, the square and the rectangle, because you're going to need them. Okay. And that's it. My block is perfectly squared and centered, and it's ready to go into the rest of the four patch. Okay. The other ones have, they want you to square to three and a half. And I used a three and a half inch squaring ruler to do that one. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go over to 
the sewing machine now and we let's see the way you understand oh that just jumped by i'll look at it on a bigger computer and i'll see if i can answer your questions okay so let's go over to the sewing machine There we go. I hope we go. Ooh, that's terrible. Ooh, that's terrible. Oh. Goodness sakes. I'm using all different kinds of stuff around here, you guys. I'm sorry. I hope is this better? Not freezy. So DD says the the way you understand allows you to get a close cut with the chance without chance of cutting your block when trimming the batting and the stabilizer. That is correct. So you brought all Lynn says she bought all the rulers and has never used them. Inspired to get the bench pillow kits out and yeah, add them to the list. Absolutely. You'll love it. Yeah. Much better. Sorry, you guys, I was on, uh, I was on my phone. We've had such a deal here with the technicals. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you've, you know, you've got those tools and I love those orange pop rulers. Uh, I reach for those all the time for a lot more than Kimberbell projects because there's a lot of things that you can do a lot to whatever. And so they're very handy to have. All right. So I've already gone ahead and sewn together the little three inch blocks, you were supposed to square these to three and a half and you square this to six and a half. Okay. I did end up using some, uh, foam Pellon product that I had here. Cause I did not have, uh, any Kimber Bell foam. So you guys, the weather's bad and everybody is home. So everybody's on the internet and streaming TV and all of that. Yeah. You watch it while you clean the kitchen, Elaine. Well, good. That's what you do. You should clean your sewing room. <laughs> I can't see your sewing room. I'm teasing you. All right. So these are really simple to put together once you get to this point, right? And I want to show y'all, look how close that trimmer by George trimmed that batting. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. It's just does such a great, great job. Now, one of the great things about using these when you go to put these together is you if you used the background quilting, you have got the lines that created the frame in the block by block quilting. Okay. <laughs> If you didn't use that, you can be kind of at a loss once you cut this to say, okay, where exactly do I need to match these points up on side to side? You can you can wing it and see if it works, but you might end up, you know, restitching quite a bit. So, a trick you can do is to create yourself some stitching lines. All right, I'm going to get you right here. I'm making sure that the little blue Becky Power Tools with Thread is not in the way. But what you can do, see, I've got them right here, these corner lines, so I don't need that. But on this one, well, I, I've got it too. But anyway, what you can do is you can draw yourself some quarter-inch seams um, with some friction markers, okay? And then when you do that, you're going to you're gonna make a... So like on here, there's not, there's not something for me to use as a guide here. So what I can do is I'll just get, I'm going to mark a quarter inch on it right here and then mark a quarter inch on it right here. And it's exactly as if you have yourself a quarter inch stitching line that's corner is exactly where you're going to put the pin i hope that makes sense okay so 
You guys are, oh, your sewing room's already organized. Good for you. Awesome. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is put these two together. All right. And they go like this. And then let's see, make sure this is right. All right. So the way I do this, y'all, is I'm going to put this in right. So I've got a stitch line from the outer frame and then this is the batting line or that's that quarter inch in okay take a pin and then put it in the corner of the stitching line to its partner and it does not matter that your edges are uneven just let leave that be okay it doesn't matter that your edges are uneven it's perfect see that it's perfectly fine don't get all wo worked up on these edges have to match the trick is to make sure that the the that quarter inch away they are pinned together and then you want to hold the pin level you want to hold the pin horizontal and then i'm going to go and just anchor this like in one side of the seam allowance and out the other okay and if you want to make yourself a little mark you got a lot of threads or something you can do that that's where i'm going to stitch and then i'm going to stitch just inside that seam line right there and that's to make sure that that seam line is hidden in the seam allowance. I don't want to see that, that tack down line. Okay. So let me do this one. Pin this in right here and pin it in right there. I'm going right into that corner. See that? Going right into that corner, just like that. Okay. I'm going to pin these, hold that pin horizontal. And I know that this is going to stitch straight now. Okay. And then I'm going to go in one side of the seam allowance and out the other. There. And now I just need to do a straight stitch on this. Right inside of that stitch line so that the stitch line is captured in the um, in the seam allowance. Fold a pin. Don't don't sew over your pins. I'm about a needle width away from that inside seam, that inside tack down line. I like it. My little feet are even. See that? That looks good. That'll work. Everything works, I think, on this. Okay. Now I'm going to do this one. Now I tried doing open, pressing my seam allowances open on this, and I failed miserably. Did not work. So I'm going to just... I folded them to one side or the other to nest them up. Okay. Now here's where I stick. I drew that. Okay. So now I'm going to put my pin right through there and go in through the stitch line on the other one. So you, you can make this work regardless of what you used for your background quilting. You've been very challenged with the lining seams. Okay. Yeah. I pin toward the project. You mean like that? Yep. I'll do that. And in the middle here, I'm just going to go ahead and put a pin in. The, uh, I don't have a seam to match, but I just want to lock it so that it doesn't dance around and go anywhere. Okay. And then this one, see, I've got a lot of extra fabric. I'm just go in here. Oh, I need a... I need a seam allowance uh, on this one. The idea is not to have to do it more than once, right? And now I know I'm going to put that right in there at that point. 
and I know it's going to be level and it's going to fit and everything will work. And I'm going to sew up the middle, a pin up the middle. Okay, now we're ready to put this together. I'm going to start on that quarter inch line. I backstitch on that because I don't want it to run off. more detailed uh, video of doing the cutting and uh, pressing and trimming up and all that. That was January's and you can take a look at that finishing video and see it all. So this worked out really nice. Okay. I'm very, very happy with this. That's awesome. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. See? So this turned out, I know I'm dark over here, you guys. I didn't turn the light. I didn't turn the, um, the light around with me. But there we go. So we're all ready for the backing now to go on. You can put another layer of batting in between if you like. You don't have to. I didn't with the snowmies. As a matter of fact, I'm going to get my snowmies and turn my lighting. So hold on just one second. Okay. That's a little bit better for lighting. Yeah, I wanted to have the frame here so we could hook it on. So no, I'm not. I'm not going to do uh, any kind of batting or anything in between. I probably could iron it, but meh, it's no big deal. Yeah, I'm very pleased with it, you guys. This is super cute. It's adorable, right? You can't put a price on cute, according to Kimberbell. So I'm just going to lay this on here. Now, last time I trimmed up the backing to match the bat, uh, the, the top and then sewed it. I'm not going to do that this time. Uh, I'm going to take the suggestion somebody made and I'm just going to leave the backing too large and then we'll cut it uh, afterwards and it, after it's all done. But I am going to use some sew tights. And so I'm going to get these. This is my little sew tights board. And all I do with these is I'm going to take the, the backing and just kind of pop it underneath where it's not going to have a needle go through it and put that on. Okay. Get that smooth. Not like over that big thing there. Great. So tights are handy. I've got a link to them below and a permanent coupon code for 15% off. These are the So Tights HDs. If you ever want to, uh, yes, Kimberbell puts a price on cute all the time. Absolutely. <laughs> it's so fun, though. Okay. I'm just going to kind of set that on there. See? And now I'm not, I don't have to worry about uh, sticking myself. So I put my backings in here. Just get a couple. All right. And I'm going to put this one like right about there. Okay. And another one right about here. I'm just kind of going around the applique a little bit. That'll hold everything together. You can use adhesive spray between the two. You don't have to. Okay. So I'm going to maybe do one more right down here in the middle just to hold it so it doesn't get any ideas about coming apart. Okay, that's great. So now I am going to, I think I'm going to change out my foot and I'm going to stitch in the ditch through the middle to anchor all this down right now, okay? I'm going to use this guy and I need this guy. 
This is that straight stitch industrial, uh, straight stitch ditch foot from Ken Sewing. And if you have one of these kinds of machines, you absolutely are gonna want one of these. This is a non-affiliate thing, you guys, but I am loving mine. Um, there's been mixed reviews of whether it works on the Luminaire. It only works on a high shank machine. Okay, it's really designed for the straight stitch machine, just like this one. Okay. All right, so this is ready to go now. And I'm just going to uh, stitch in the ditch here. Get that in and just kind of go through here and get this all done up. I'll give it a rest and raise the use the knee lift and raise. Now I'm going to have white thread on the back of this and I'm okay with that. It's not that big of a deal. Can you use the walking foot with it? Sure. Absolutely, Kim. Yeah, if you want to. Go right ahead. Yeah, if you've got a regular sewing machine, you have a walking foot, that'd be fine. My sew tights are doing their job. Woo! Hold on. Can you see that? I can't see that. I think I'm a, I think I'm okay with it, right? Yep, that looks good. Yeah, this machine is just this side of industrial, you guys. It's um, it's a beast, and I like it. Let's see. Now I'm gonna go this way. The sew tights are grabbing onto the metal faceplate on the machine, you guys. This thing is strong. But the nice part of it is I'm not sticking myself with pins at all. Okay. All right, so now I'm ready to just go and sew this down, right? So I'm just going to keep the outside of the foot on the edge of the quilt top. Just to the inside, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. Does that machine have a walking foot? It does not. There, no, I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it does not. Turning out cute, you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. You are you can be late if you say it looks good. That's fine.
Have you guys started this yet? Let me know if you've if you've already started it. Yeah, Colleen, I love this foot for my bindings. That's exactly what I bought it for, and I'm going to use it here for the binding in just a minute. It's a great foot for putting on binding. All right. Now we're ready to trim the quilt up and get it ready for binding. This turned out adorable, you guys. This is so cute and it's so fun. You use that. Oh, good. It does work on your Juki. Yeah, it works good on straight stitch machines, you guys. Again, there's been mixed reviews on the... Uh, there's been mixed reviews on using it on the high shank luminaire. I'm moving you guys over to my ironing station so that I can trim this up. I don't want to walk in front of the camera, but I don't think I have a choice. Okay. Sorry about that. So I have my quilters cut and press here. That looks good. Looks good on the back. Good enough for government work, you guys. I'm happy with it. Don't have a big long ruler over here. Hold on one second. Okay. If your edges are uneven, you're going to go with the smallest one, the most narrow. You know, make sure everything's straight and works. That's good. I don't want to cut off the seam I just sewn. But I also want this to be, I want all of the little edges caught up in the binding. was so fun to put together y'all if you were here this morning you might have seen that i um made a mess up i made a boo-boo on mr boy bird the first time and so i actually had to go into my stash and go find some more fabric and make another one i did not have enough of that original fabric so i had to use different fabric different backing uh, background the whole nine yards Oh, that turned out super cute. It needs a binding. Okay, here we go. Thank you, Mona, for my sticker. You're a sweetheart. Thank you so much. We just have a good time here, don't we? You guys are awesome. Thank you. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> yeah, JD. Hey, I'm an old GI. I'm good with that. I've heard that phrase since I was a kid. My parents were in, my dad was in, my grandfather was in, I was in. Good enough for government work. I think it looks great myself, if I do say so myself. Okay, so now we need to put the, uh, attach the binding. So I'm going to leave myself a gap. How long is this ruler? This is an eight inch ruler. So I'm just going to leave a little eight inch gap over here. And that way I can have enough room. I'm just going to make a mark. Okay. And that's going to give me enough room to work with to make my, um, to make my uh, binding pieces overlap. And we're going to meet them upright. Somebody sent me a link to a video using a, uh, a folded corner trimmer, folded tucker trimmer. It wasn't a tucker trimmer. Anyway. Those work great too, but I'm going to show you how to do this if you don't have any of those fancy rulers, okay? Okay. <laughs> I like that, Lee. Definition of good enough. <laughs> Measure with a micrometer, mark with a piece of chalk, and cut with a chainsaw. Should you stitch in the ditch in the upper left area? Oh, I see what you're talking about. Right here. You know, I did folded corner clipper. Thank you, Sophies. 
I, that's it. You can if you want. You don't have to. The only reason I stitched in the ditch was to stabilize the backing to the project. And that's really it, just so that it doesn't get poofy. If you don't do, you know, the other ones look okay. It looks fine. The the what you see for bubbles on the back, the wrinkles, is much more defined in the camera. You can't hardly see them here. I wouldn't do it. You don't need to. Okay. So I've got my two and a half inch strip binding. Okay. And just like usual, we're going to sew raw edge to raw edge. And I use this template. I, fe I learned about this from Karen Brown from Just Get It Done Quilts. This is just a piece of plastic. Now this piece of plastic happens to be a grid that goes over a pantograph on the back of my long arm. The one I bought was for a 12 foot long arm and my long arm is 10 feet. So I cut off two feet of it. And that's where I got this plastic. You can, I've got this gridded plastic in my Amazon shop, but you can get gridded plastic. You can use a butter dish lid, whatever you want. Okay. I just like this. And then it's two and a half inches. And then I cut a 45 degree. Okay. Thank you, Marsha. Oh, good. The discount covered the postage. That's great. Yeah. Cool. Good for you. Those, I use those HD. So I use my, I use my magnums on my long arm, but I use the HDs in all of my other projects. Okay. So the point of this, this improved my binding, the way it looks from, from the front, just unbelievable. Let me get all this out of the way. I got stuff everywhere, y'all. Okay. So I'm going to start. To, I Like I said, I left myself an eight-inch opening. I got to think what I'm doing. And I'm just going to leave my tail. I'll leave the tail like, I don't know a little bit more than half of the eight inch opening. Okay. So I'm just going to start on there. We're going to start on this. All right. And this machine has got, let me get in here so you guys can see. I don't know if you can see down into it. Let me get you close. This machine has got a quarter inch line that goes horizontally right here. So I'm kind of keeping an eyeball and watching for the corner of this to reach up to that line. And then I raise the needle or raise the foot and turn it to a 45 and stitch off the corner just like that. Okay. Now I'm going to use the foot as an extra little hand. And then I'm going to use my template right on the corner. I've got the 45 pointing in toward this, and the point of the plastic is right on the edge. Okay, that's holding it in place. And I'm just going to fold without moving it. And I'm just going to fold this back to get myself a nice, sharp 45 degree angle, okay? Now I'm gonna lift up, pull the template out, and now I'm gonna use the other end of it to put here against the edge and get a nice 90 degree angle fold. And that just really improves the look. Okay, I'm gonna pull this out. Oh, come on. I don't want to mess that up. Now I'm going to put a pin to pin this and hold it so I can turn it without losing all of my good work there. Okay. There we go. So this is a good way to do bindings. When I stitch on the binding, I usually will come in like, I don't know. Not even, not quite half an inch, maybe a third of an inch. I'll go backwards first and then forward. You can use 
the uh, walking foot or a move it foot for this. I learned this trick from uh, Janet Prey from Creative so um, uh, Islander Sewing Systems. If you put your thumb under and your finger on top and roll it, you will prevent the bottom from being pulled through faster than the top. Her mother used to work in the garment industry and that's what they did because it's they don't work with pins in the garment industry. So it's nice, you can line up this edge here so you know that it's straight and you're gonna get that perfect 45 degree angle. I need to get that up there where it goes like that, there. Okay. This little template just made all the difference in the world, you guys. You can make it out of cardboard from a cereal box, okay? It doesn't have to be plastic. You can do anything you want. You notice I don't use the quarter inch markings on here. Okay. You just loaded that so tight magnum to your long arm and you're going to load a king quilt on a testra. I did it. Works good. They're expensive, but oh my gosh, I like them so much better than pins. I used to have a snapper system that caused a lot of bulk. I really like them. Don't hit the uh, metal part with your needle and throw your timing out. Ask me how I know about that. Brand new machine. I just did it. It's great. <laughs> My technician sent me an emoji with a face smack. I said, yeah, I did that. I'm trying to, trying to get him to FaceTime me remote technical assistance. <laughs> I think I can do it. Yeah, I've had those magnums hold through minky, everything, and they work so well. So, so well. And you, you do figure out that you don't necessarily, you know, they don't have to butt up end to end like those pins. I mean, it just holds. It works so good. You can if you want, but you don't have to. Because my magnums can slide around inside the casing. All right, last corner. Yeah, this binding technique has just helped me so, so much. Um, I just cannot believe how much better on all of my quilts. And I machine bind. I'm not a hand binder, you guys. I just don't do that. I don't care for it. My hands can't do I don't hand sew anything. All right, where is my eight inch mark? Right about there. Okay, 
all done. All right. Now I need to, I, I'm going to put this underneath to give myself an extra little hand right there. So here are my two ends, and this is how we do this, okay? I'm going to fold this one over. And on this one, either one, it doesn't matter. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a little bit off the end straight like this. This is my measuring guide, okay? And this is a two and a half inch strip, so this little piece should be two and a half. Should be. It is. Okay. So this is my two and a half inch strip. Now what I do is I take my measuring guide and I even up right here. Am I in close enough for y'all to see? Let me get in. Whoop, oh, wrong way. Okay. It's a little dark back here. I'm sorry. So I'm I'm getting these edges even right here. Okay. And then what I like to do is I'm going to pull this backwards about a quarter of an inch, just a teeny tiny little bit. That quarter of an inch makes all the difference in not getting a bubble. So now instead of being even, my little measuring piece is a quarter of an inch farther away from the edge. Okay. And then I'm just going to take this piece and lay it down over the top. And I'm going to take my scissors. And now on this far edge over here, I'm going to cut this right even with the edge of the fabric. Okay, that's it. No measuring. Isn't that nice? This is how you do it if you don't have them folder, folded corner clipper thingies. You don't need that. So here are my two ends. Okay, so now what you, here's what you do. This one, I'm going to lay it out flat. Okay right side up. This one, I'm looking at the wrong side of the fabric. I'm going to kick it back, okay, and I'm going to flip it around 360 degrees all the way, okay, and then I'm going to marry up these points. Do you want me to do that again? Okay, all right. We'll do that one more time for those of you that need to look. The, the one on my left goes out flat. I'm going to lay it face up. This one, I'm looking at the underside of it. I'm going to kick it away from me and turn it around one full rotation, 360 degrees. Okay. And then I'm going to match up these points and pin them. And then... I'm going to take the top edge of this one and put it exactly on here. And I'm going to pin that. Okay. All right, this looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew from corner to corner. It helps to have this diagonal seam tape on here, you guys. Before you cut, unpin it, flip it out, make sure it's right. That's perfect. Okay, sorry about that. So now I'm gonna cut this at my quarter inch. I'm not a fan of, of that uh, trimmer ruler method of having these on the bias. They stretch like crazy. And then trying to sew those together, uh, sometimes that doesn't work real well for me. I'm sure it works well for some of y'all, but trying to marry those up when you're, you're in a real limited space anyway. I'm just finger pressing this down. Okay, this looks good. What happened here? What in the wild, wild world of sports is going on? 
Okay, now I'm ready to just sew this on right here like this. Like this way i know it is easy you just have to do it 400 times kim after that it's a breeze see it came out just perfect i don't have any bubbles and it fit perfectly okay now i'm going to take it over to the ironing board and i'm going to press it out flat and press those miters into the corners okay so let me move you out of the way so i can get by over to my ironing board I'll let you look at the quilt instead of my backside go by. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what? My iron is not on, is it? No, it is not. Because they told us to conserve energy and my iron is an energy hog. I didn't turn my iron on. I meant to. That's okay. I can still do this. I'll just iron it later. All right. I might give it a few minutes. Oh, I need to trim this. I don't like that. Got a little bit of edge hanging out here. It doesn't, it doesn't belong there. Just little scraps. There we go. Okay. So, super cute. This is a diagonal, uh, directional fabric, too. No, I really want this pressed. So let's go around and answer questions while my iron heats up. Yeah. I'm good at this. Sure. <laughs> so let's see. Don't forget the back hanger. Y'all, it's right here. I'm ready. I got the back hanger. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> what size hoop? Um, you can do these in a five by seven, the main designs in a five by seven. You're, you're probably going to need a six by 10 in order to do the background quilting from Camera Bell if you want. You got jump back to the beginning. Okay. Yeah. You guys want to hit the thumbs up? I appreciate it. Although the Quality of this one has been me, <laughs> but you guys are fine. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, okay, so the back quilt hanger. This is a 10 inch square. This is a scrap of Glory Holtz something or other, okay? So it's a 10 inch square and you fold it into a triangle, all right? And then you fold it into a triangle again, okay? And then you've got these raw edges right here, okay? These get caught up inside of the binding, all right? So I, it's just gonna be in the top there. And then all I have to do is a couple of little stitches on the point and catch the backing, and there's my quilt hanger, and it works perfectly. That's exactly what I did right here. See that? That's exactly what I did right here. So y'all don't freak out. Okay, I'm gonna take this off. It has a, a little, it has a little gap right there, okay? And it just slips right off and on, super easy, okay? It's like that. Yeah, it works great. Oh, thank you, Sandy, in stitches. Yeah, the binding method is fun. It's a great tip. That way you don't have to sit here and, you know, do the sleeve the whole 14 inches, meh. You don't have to do that, or 12. Yeah, no, you and I didn't come up with this, y'all. Somebody sent me a video on how to do this. Laura Koya of So Very Easy, she demoed this and she had like a bigger quilt and she put three of these across the top of her larger quilt. She put one in the center and one on each side, you know, and hid the corners like in the, in the ends of the binding. And then she just sewed these three little points right here. And I'm like, are you serious? And that video is old. 
but I had not seen it. And th I'll never, this is exactly the way I do my quilt hangers now. So let's see if my iron has heated up enough that I can press this out. So don't you guys worry. I've got that, I've got that uh, quilt hanger under control. It's all good. I don't want to press down my poofies. I just prefer the way the binding looks when it's pressed out. That's probably the military in me. <laughs> I, just, I like everything ironed and square. <laughs> okay. You just get a nice, a much sharper edge. Okay. Oh, sorry guys. All right, I'm all good now. Okay. <laughs> oh, you've learned a couple things. Is that your idea of a good quality video? Good, yeah, I'm glad. <sighs> we do what we can, you guys. Like I said, it's a snow day and everybody's home. Streaming galore on the internet. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of fold my hanging thing in half and find center and then I'm going to put it because I stitched in the ditched in the middle okay so I'm just going to find center at the top and I'm evening it up raw edge to raw edge and then I'll fold it over like that so now I know my hanging thing is center right there okay and fold that over and pin I'm going to pin from the front because I stitch from the front, you guys. But I got to get this on first. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little label in it. And I get my labels at Dutch Label Shop. I have woven labels and printed labels. And since this is a little... See, Carol, I got you. And since this is not an heirloom quality thing, I have little uh, lines on the back of my labels. And normally I'll just take an, a little pen and on my line, I'm just going to put 2023. That's it. It's good enough for me, you guys. Okay. And then I want my label over here on this side. And I'm just going to put that on there. Pull it down so it's cute and you can see it. And there we go. Okay, I think we're ready. Oh, geez, <laughs> you guys are right. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's 2024. <laughs> oh, man. Yes, it's a federal holiday. There's a lot of people off work. What year is this? That's funny, you guys. That is so funny. The first check I wrote, I wrote it wrong this year. And I don't write checks that often, but I had to write a check. Oh. I used the, uh... <laughs> no, I wrote it wrong. I wrote it one and I wrote it wrong. I don't write checks very often anymore, but it was for, um, uh, I, was, I don't remember what it was for, but I had, they had to have a check. Oh, it's for my taxes. Okay. I think we're ready. All right. So I'm just going to fold this over and get the stitching in the ditching. We're ready to go. Now on the corners, what I do is I will, um, yeah, you're all helping me. I love it. Okay. So we're going to just, I like to fold over where I'm going to first. It makes it easier for me. I fold that over. And then I'll do 
the one on the corner, the side that I'm on and match up and get that miter just right. If I've got my glasses on and I can see what I'm doing here. There we go. And I get that corner just right, and then I pin it exactly in that corner so it stays exactly where I want it. You know, if I was smart, I would do all of my corners first. And I go right into the corner. I look down in that hole in the foot. And then turn. And I like to use, I don't have a stiletto handy. I left my seam ripper over at the other table. Let me go ahead and do this one while I'm here and I've got room. All right. There is no way I'd do this by hand. No way. Life to live and quilts to make, you guys. I don't have time. love doing these things with you guys because you know what it makes me do them otherwise I'd get distracted all right we're sewing on the hanging sleeve Oop. excited about the hanging sleeve and forgot to turn my corner. You're making pork pie? I just made chicken and dumplings. And that's what we had for lunch. And it was pretty good. You can't go wrong with those Bisquick dumplings. You just can't. Old school works best for me. On my thread where I started, it's right here. There it is. All right, we're all done. Oh, wow, that turned out great. Okay, and I've got a needle over here in my 
Liberty of London pair pincushion that I got at Liberty of London in London. <laughs> so exciting. That was fun. And now I'm gonna stitch down that little triangle. Now I don't want any critiquing of uh, my stitching prowess by hand, you guys. <laughs> this, is, this is positive comments only, okay? This is how I roll, this is, this is it. I'm not good at this, this is why I don't do it. I hand stitch, uh, or I machine stitch everything, probably, that I can. Some of you will do fabulous, neat jobs, and good for you. And some of us are going to be glad that we don't shove it into our hand, right? Thank you. Yeah, I get my watch band on uh, Amazon. I get. A, I bought a bunch of them. They're like eight bucks a piece, and I bought them for one for each one of the seasons. And then you can buy these individual little uh, covers to protect your screen. That was a nice. Let me go under here and do this. Knot it off. See, I just about stuck it in my thumb. And one more to lock it, and I'm done. So a button on there. Oh, that's a great idea. That'd be cute, right? I got a better idea. Hot glue it. <laughs> That'd be. Oh, you mean after instead of sewing this on? Yeah, that'd be cute. Okay. All right. It's done. Look at that. Isn't that cute? I could use heat and bond ultra to tack it down. Absolutely. Okay. So this thing, this is the back. And I'm just going to slip the, the little triangle. Like that. Slip it under there. Okay. I need to iron this out. I do need to do that. And flatten it down with a, I'll use a clapper and all that. Here we go. It's February. All finished. Yay. How cute is that? Yo, that turned out adorable. So fun. So I'm going to put my snowmies back up for probably another week or so. And then, um, then I'll I'll pop this guy on around the first of February. Yeah, but this is this is fun. Oh my gosh! Like I said, I'm glad I'm doing this with you guys. Otherwise, I wouldn't do them. You know, they'd sit in the box and not get done. So, oh, this is this is so much fun. Now you want to do it too? Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome, Lynn's hubby. Hubby. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's so easy, right? And it's really easy when we sit and do it together. And um, I just, it's just precious. It's just absolutely precious, you guys. Well, good. So uh, if you want to join me on this, there are links below the video. Please use my link and you can get the design. Uh, you can get uh, the fabric. You get all six months if you buy the kit or you can source your own. You might have a stash that's crazy like mine. Um, you can do that or, and then they have an embellishment kit. You can do that. If not, you certainly can, you know, work around that too. But the one thing you do have to get is the CD. And right now they're out of stock everywhere. So if you do, you hit the link uh, below, it'll jump you to the shop where you're going to, you, um, you just sign up and it'll say, you know, notify me when available and they'll shoot you an email and then you can get them and join us for March. So we're gonna be doing this the second Thursday and Friday of every month. So Thursday is single needle, Friday is multi-needle, and then the third Monday is the finish and uh, assembly and finish. So um, it's gonna be great. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you wanna join me, we'll be doing this each month and I think they're just precious, so. All right, you guys, this has been fun. Do I do I do the binding at the corner so that I don't get piggy noses? 
Well, I don't get piggy noses because I used my little template. I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. All right, you guys, this has been fun. Uh, join me tomorrow morning in the Stituation Room. It is on this channel, uh, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 a.m. Central. And um, we just visit and, you know, maybe we sew, maybe we do something, but uh, we always get a lot of fun. It's a great way to start your day. So if you have not subscribed already, please do. You'll always find something to do here and give the video a thumbs up. So that's it. We will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye.